Joining us here on Ukraine Today is Yuri Vitrenko. He's the head of international business at Ukraine's uh, state-run Naftogaz. Thank you very much for joining us at the Tiger Conference organized by the uh, Kiev Post. Uh, so uh, my first question actually is to do with uh, Naftogaz itself. Now, under previous governments, it was a monopoly. And in April, the chief executive said that we can't make it a monopoly. And in September, Yatsenyuk said it can't be a monopoly. So is it still a monopoly? Yes and no, because first of all, again, we're in the middle of this very important transformation of nafta gas. Mm -hmm. And in certain segments of the market, we're still a monopoly. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there are some um, natural monopolies, like, for example, gas transmission grid. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in the process of unbundling it uh, to make it a separate company, separate from nafta gas. And, uh, but it will stay as monopoly because there are some natural reasons for that. You should not have, again, uh, two or three national grids. You can mm. be economically efficient is to have only one. Mm. At the same time, speaking of, for example, gas trading and gas supply, mm. uh, we are a monopoly in certain segments, like, for example, selling gas to suppliers that then uh, supply it mm. to households, mm. or, for example, to municipal heating enterprises. Yeah. Uh, but over here, we have some liberalization from the 1st of October, mm -hmm. and at least now the legislation allows uh, for other companies mm -hmm. to enter this market and to start selling gas for household needs. Um, unfortunately, again, it's, it's very slow in terms of some real changes mm. uh, for many reasons, but at least we're getting there. Mm. And uh, in certain segments, like for example, sales uh, to industrial consumers, mm. we're not a monopoly, and that is now, for example, is a fully liberalized market. Yeah, do you think there's some people who want to keep it a monopoly? No. Who, who would want to keep it a monopoly? Uh, yes, of course, but uh, well, for who, many who reasons. Yeah, for many reasons. First of all, they are populist and uh, they really uh, want to have uh, low subsidized uh, prices to households yeah. uh, because it's a part of the old social contract that they want to keep or to return. Mm. Second, there are some oligarch groups uh, that uh, had some arbitrage opportunities because yeah. of the difference in prices and also because of their, again, monopoly. So mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, uh, they use nafta gas and nafta gas monopoly uh, to justify their monopoly, for example, in the distribution segment mm -hmm. or something like that. Do you so, think, is it easy yeah. to break this sort of monopoly if it's controlled by the oligarchs, as you say? Will uh, it take a lot of time? Or yeah, what, what do you think? It's difficult, of mm -hmm. course, again. Fighting oligarchs in Ukraine is not an easy fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there is no other way. Yeah. Uh, you said earlier on that during the panel that uh, NAFTA gas, the parliament and the ministries have different plans, different systems and ideas, and um, they were going in all different directions. So what work is being done to streamline efforts? Uh, can it be done or not? We're more or less aligned with the parliament. Yeah. Uh, for example, we, we had a very successful case mm. uh, in, of cooperation with the parliament when uh, the parliament adopted the new law on the gas market. Yeah. It's really like a very European law. It's implementation of the so-called third, uh, third energy package in Ukraine mm -hmm. that was a very, very successful case of opening the market, creating some fair competition and stuff like that. Mm. Um, at the same time, uh, we do have sometimes uh, tensions with the ministry mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons. Uh, again, um, well, what, what reasons? Uh, first of all, uh, a very um, important part of this reform mm. is insulating nafta gas from political meddling and graft. Mm. And uh, when we're talking about political meddling, unfortunately, it's also political meddling from the, from the ministry because yes, yeah. the minister is a politician, basically. Mm. He represents a certain political uh, uh, party, basically. And uh, of course, I mean, probably they're afraid to lose his control. Mm. We do hope that it's for a good reason. Like, for example, as I mentioned, uh, uh, or use this analogy when uh, you're like a, a teen and you want to be independent and yeah. you think that you're already grown up mm -hmm. and parents should let you uh, like again become independent really independent and 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 parents are still kind of trying to uh, take too much care of you so yeah. let's hope that's so that's how the case much like success this. do you think that these reforms in the gas market will have given that these politicians don't really want reforms in the gas market or in the ministry yeah. you know as you're saying I, I can't say that they don't want reforms I just I, I just say that sometimes we have very different views mm. over what is uh, critical yeah. uh, to have some real changes. So, sometimes, so what's of the course, solution? they don't want reforms. Uh, how do you find out one single route? First of all, again, sometimes, for example, we um, 
partner with the parliament and yeah. then the parliament adopts a law that makes uh, the ministry again to move in the right direction. But did the ministry yes. actually do this? So even if the parliament adopts the law, do, do the sometimes results Sometimes they're through? forced, sometimes so again, yeah, they're trying maybe. to put way, yes, yeah. ways around it and that's yeah. a problem because, uh, and also there's a lack of trust, mm. uh, that's also uh, a problem. Yeah. But also we try to be open, again mm. I'm giving this interview so yeah. that uh, people of Ukraine and market participants, uh, they demand certain changes and then the ministry understands and the government in general, mm. they understand what people really demand it. There should be some healthy pressure yeah. from the civil society, otherwise we won't see the changes that we need. Mm, I see. And um, I wanted to move on about diversification of Ukraine's gas supplies. And there's been a lot of talk in the news recently about um, Russian gas, Gazprom supplies stopped in Ukraine now. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Please, what sort of uh, diversification is happening? Actually, it's a very funny situation when uh, we decided not to buy gas from Gazprom mm. for a very simple reason. Again, it was just more expensive than the gas from the West. Yeah. And uh, Gazprom made the, all this fuss about it. Mm. Uh, again, for them, it's important uh, to sell this uh, idea to their local Russian audience mm. that uh, other states really depend on Russian gas and they would crave basically uh, for getting Russian gas and uh, for all the political consensus from uh, their side. Mm. Uh, but in our case, again, we don't need to make any political uh, concessions because we don't depend on Russian gas anymore. Yeah. We have more than enough capacity to bring gas from the West. Yeah. Uh, we now uh, need, in terms of our total import uh, needs, uh, less than uh, 20 billion cubic meters of gas, while our capacities to bring gas from the West uh, are about 20 billion cubic meters. Mm. So again, we can cover all the needs uh, from the West, not importing gas from Russia at all. Mm. And uh, But w as a commercial company, of course, we have to be reasonable with regard to comparing different prices from different sources. Yes, yeah. So if, for example, of course, we will choose if we, think, uh, we see that the price in the West is much higher mm. than the price uh, from Russia, and especially given that uh, our European partners, to some extent, want us still to buy gas from Russia. Mm. Well, why is that, actually? Mm. Uh, uh, first of all, for security of supply reasons. Oh, because um, of the pipelines yes. through Ukraine. Yes, yeah. and yeah. of course, markets, especially in Europe, they're very mm. sensitive uh, to potential interruptions of um, gas supply mm. As we've seen before in, yeah. the, in the past decade. Yes, yeah. and they are still, uh, they are uh, to some extent comfortable mm. with our progress over the last year, mm. but still they are afraid that if, for example, we don't have enough gas, mm. uh, then uh, there will be some, I don't know, pilferage of gas basically in yeah. Ukraine or misappropriation and that would result in some another gas war. Yeah. Uh, from our standpoint, we prove, we are proving it like all the time, that mm. first of all, they should not uh, be afraid about pilferage or uh, yeah. misappropriation. In fact, is this still a problem? Uh, uh, frankly speaking, mm -hmm. uh, it has never been a problem, in like a real problem. It's just a problem of Russian propaganda. Saying so it's that not true. There, there is like, no yes, it's not true. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, also, um, you know, you're an investment banker. You said in the yeah. former investment banker. Um, so, um, from your analysis and your your ideas, um, does Ukraine actually have enough gas for the winter? Uh, again, yes and no, because of course it would be. Uh, unreasonable to say that mm. we don't need to buy gas anymore for the winter. We yeah. have enough uh, gas in our storage. Mm. Uh, we have more than uh, 2 billion cubic meters, yeah. uh, like more if compared to the previous year. Containers. Yes, underground, yes, yeah. underground storage. Mm. It's not a container, basically. It's like a former well that yeah. is now used for storage. Uh, but again, so we have uh, 2 billion cubic meters more than we had, we had last year. Mm -hmm. And last year it was a very comfortable winter for us. Yeah. Uh, so this year we have, again, no grounds to uh, be concerned about that. Yeah. On the other hand, we have more in terms of capacities to bring gas from the West. So mm. we will need to buy gas this winter. Yeah. But again, we can buy it either from the West or from Russia. Mm. And we're very comfortable with that. So okay. again, I have no one more question for you, actually. Problem, yeah. Who actually benefits uh, from this gas diversification? Is it um, Ukrainian consumers? Because in Ukraine, the bills are going up. So although you have a free a market, less monopoly, the, the, the bills for households are still going up. So uh, why is that? Let's compare apples to apples. So for mm. example, prices for industrial users that used to pay uh, market prices, they're mm. going down. 
again, because now we are integrated into the European market, mm -hmm. and when prices in the European market are, are prices are going down, again, prices so in the European cost market, on them. yes, yeah, yeah they're no, this, yes, 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 yeah. exactly. So, yeah. and that's why the economy profits from it. Mm. In terms of household prices, there were so-called hidden subsidies. So mm. the price was not even near the market price; it was 15 times lower than the market wow. price. Okay. So if it was increased seven times. Again, it's still it was below the market price, and now basically when market prices are going down to this level, mm -hmm. it's still, by the way, the market price is slightly above like 10, 15 percent above the, this, the regulated price for households. Mm -hmm. But you cannot say that look again, uh, bills are going up again. So yeah. it's just because these hidden subsidies are transferred mm -hmm. into explicit subsidies, yeah. and the government says, okay, so if you cannot pay for gas, mm -hmm. uh, we will look at your financial state, and mm -hmm. if you really need it, we will give you a subsidy. So that you can pay your bill. Okay. But if you again, if you're rich enough, uh, we don't need to give the subsidies to you. It's fair. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, Yuri Vitrenko. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on Thank Ukraine you. today. Thank you. Now back to the news.